Fernando Alonso once said that when you aim for perfection, you discover that it is a moving target. And in striving for perfection, he has experienced some resounding highs and lows in Formula 1 and beyond. Yet, in this video, we will be exploring how well his comeback year has gone. We'd also like to hear what you've made of his return in the comment section below. But first, let's go back 12 months. Towards the end of his McLaren career, Alonso cut a very frustrated figure who had become bored with driving around with GP2 engines that had an unhealthy smoking habit. So by 2021, the main question was, would this be the Fernando of old or just an old Fernando? The bicycle crash in February certainly did not allay these fears and neither did a slow start to the season, with fans on Twitter slamming his return as Schumacher 2.0. Although he scored his first points in Singapore 2018 at Imola, performances picked up from back onwards with five consecutive points finishes. Then, in Hungary, after Bottas decided to go carpin bowling into both Red Bulls and Hamilton took self-isolation to a whole new level, Ocon found himself in a lead that he would never relinquish. While Hamilton was busy mounting a grind from behind, Alonso battled Lewis in what was a real throwback of a battle for well over 10 laps. The delay cost Hamilton a crack at the win, but it ensured that Ocon took his first, and that made for an unforgettable day at Alpine. But if that was Ocon's day, then Fernando's would come later in the year at Qatar, where he took his 98th podium and first since Hungary 2014. But speed wasn't the only part of old Alonso that fans were unsure of. Was he still toxic? After a few years in rally and endurance, where drivers have to share their cars, let alone garages, the Spaniard has demonstrated a real sense of maturity and he galvanized an Alpine team, which started the year on the back foot. He has also shown that he has become a real team player on several occasions this season, with even Le Professeur noting that change in Alonso's attitude. And if anybody else needed any proof, just look at the way Fernando and Ocon ran towards each other after Hungary and Qatar. And the cherry on the cake was definitely the hilarious banter between them during the Ballon d'Or ceremony. Comedy gold. Speaking of Esteban Ocon, El Plan has gone according to, well, plan sort of, for both drivers, with Ocon out-qualifying Fernando throughout the season and the Spaniard hitting back in the races. The average qualifying gap between the two was also less than a tenth all season, and it shows how they maximized the machinery at their disposal, and that is definitely a good sign for the team, which in the last few months of 2020 also experienced a mini-revolution when Luca De Meo became the new CEO. Cyril Abitbull was let go, and then replaced by David Abrivio, and there was also the rebranding of the team from Renault to Alpine. But after all that, what is El Plan? Well, the first mention of it came from an interview Alonso gave to Spanish media. And logically, the plan would be to have a car that can fight for regular podium finishes and possibly victories next season. And to do that, the team has used 2021 to keep on developing its new engine, which Fernando will be hoping won't have been an ambitious but rubbish plan. However guys, that's it for today's video, we hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you again. But until next time, goodbye.